actually had more than one title. I think the first one was Mustard Seed. Um, but I, as I kind of worked with the whole, with the book, it really seemed to me that there is so much in the Bible and so much in the sermons about not being afraid. Fear not, starting with that. But it just runs through the whole thing. And so I settled on unafraid. That doesn't mean that we're to be reckless or not to, to, not to exercise caution or that there aren't dangers in there. But it seems to me that we're now in a society where there's a lot of just fearfulness engendered about all sorts of things. And it's also a, uh, it also comes from uh, a, a Danish song, Unafraid, which is something that we sing. And it's, uh, that I'm a Danish American. My father was a, uh, was basically, a, both my parents came uh, from uh, Danish ancestry. And uh, this song was really, comes from the time during the, uh, was really very popular during, of all things, uh, the resistance, the Danish resistance. So it isn't a song that was sung when there was no danger, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, and it goes, uh, unafraid wherever you go, choosing God to guide you. Let your course run high or low, he will strength provide you. In the darkness undismayed, like the stars made steady, when sincerely you have prayed, heart and soul are ready. Give your life for what you love, until death be loyal. God will bless you from above, living will be royal. This was a song that was sung by people who were surrounded by Nazis and all kinds of food services and, and uh, people going uh, into prisons and so forth. So, but there was that spirit, and I think it's a spirit that we can still have in spite of all the things that go on in our lives. So, uh, And I think that and I look back at the people that I grew up with, I, I feel like there was more of that spirit of being unafraid, and I think that's sort of what this is about. The book structure, the book actually begins with the, the, at the time of the death of my father, and uh, some of the experiences I had at that particular time. I won't go into that right now, I'll let you read about that. And then there's something that he actually wrote word for word, uh, in 68 about riding the rails. He, when he became a minister, his first church, he had to hop a freight. It was during the Depression, and he took the freight actually from Nebraska. He got as far as Nebraska, and then he had to take the freight to uh, Oakland, California, to San Francisco. And he, he loved to tell that story about being with the hobos and, and riding the freight. And it's kind of, it's a really interesting story. And along the way, he gets the news that his mother has died. And he, had, and he realizes he's not going to get back to Denmark and see her ever again. And he's just in a lot of the, uh, depression and uncertainty. And then he has a, an experience which is really was one of the foundations of his ministry. I also want to talk a little bit about the background. Uh, the Danish Lutherans, which is where I kind of came from, were divided between what they called the Holy Danes and the Happy Danes. And we belong to the Happy Danes. So. <laughs> and I'll tell you, this is not, not a real, you know, it's a movement that, it's, it's not that we should all go back to being Happy Danes, I don't think that's realistic, but I think there were a lot of things about that time that pertain to now. The sermons and stories, the way the book is organized too, is that it begins, uh, it's organized in terms of the church year. Today is Trinity Sunday. At that time, there was actually a season called Trinity, and that has now been sort of folded in. But it, we have, and actually the, the, the church year begins with Advent. The book begins on that cycle. But in each cycle, like Christmas or Advent, you begin in the, you have things from as early as 39 up till 65. So you have the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. Then you go on to the next season. So it kind of has a spiral kind of uh, organization. So it's a little bit different. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about my father. This is my father over here, a little boy, and he was born in the United States, which a lot of people even who knew him didn't realize. And um, when he was in 19, 1898, and uh, in uh, 
This was taken in about 1902. There were two other children. One died uh, very young, and the other one was a, a little baby that was born after this. And uh, Lars died in uh, 1903 and in 1904. Matilda, who was alone on a farm uh, with three children and not able to speak English, uh, took the children back to Denmark to, so she could live with her parents. So he was raised in Denmark. In Denmark, he grew up and he went to school, and he was in the Royal Guard, and that is, that is a picture of my father. And the little boy, this is a modern picture, it's taken at the same place where he, where he, was, uh, he guarded the castle at Amelia Borg, and that is taken in the same place. So that's a modern dress. You see there are some slight differences, but the still, they still have the bare hats and so forth. And then he came back to the United States. Uh, he came back ostensibly to see if there was anything left of the farm. And, I, and during that time, he did a lot of really unusual things. Uh, for about six years or so, he spent two years in Yellowstone National Park. Uh, and in the park, he was helping to build, uh, he did construction work, he loved to do construction work. He built the big, some of the big fireplaces, he showed some of the big boulders that he moved. He knew Yellowstone Park like the back of his hand. And later, he took young people from the church, and particularly Minnesota, to see the park. Uh, he also was a rancher. This is not taken from Montana, but he was a rancher up in Montana. He was alone on a ranch. He spent a lot of years there. I know at one time he told us that he thought he had died. He wrote his name on the wall so they would find, they would know whose body it was when they found him. He was that ill. And uh, that may have been part of the reason, I suspect, part of the reason why he decided to go in the ministry. I don't know exactly what it was, but he went into the ministry. He went to Grandview Seminary in Des Moines, uh, and that's uh, near where Kay lived at one point, <laughs> right near there. And that's, uh, and then he married my mother. He married the niece of the dean of the seminary, and actually my, uh, my grandmother wrote to the dean. I have that letter someplace and wanted to know about his character, and she got a letter back that he had very good character, but he tended to be a little stubborn. <laughs> so if you see any of that in my... <laughs> his, uh, but his uh, wedding day was September 8th. That happens to be Grunfey's birthday also, which you'll hear more about. They were married on that day. It was his wedding and ordination took place on the same day in Clinton, Iowa, actually. Oh, oh, wow. And then they moved, after two years, they moved to Diamond Lake, Minnesota, and that's where I was uh, born. Uh, my brother was born there. My mother was very pregnant when they moved there. The weather was, it was in that terrible, dusty, hot time. And uh, so that, this is from Diamond Lake, Minnesota. Uh, my brother was born there. Then they had another child named Paul who died. And then, uh, I was, then I was born, and I was kind of a replacement child, I would say, uh, from Paul. And this is myself and my brother, my mother and father in 1942. And shortly after that, they moved to a church in Clinton. Now, now the reason these are kind of important to the story is that these are the places the sermons take place. These are the places the stories take place. So that's why I'm kind of talking about it. And uh, this is the church in uh, in Kimbleton, Iowa, which at that time was a big Danish church. Uh, it's just sort of in a smaller town now. You know, the towns in Iowa have also kind of gone through with some of our towns up here. So it's a small town in Iowa. It's, it's about two miles just from the Danish Museum in Elkhorn. And there we are in Kimbleton, Iowa. And that, my sister was born there. Her name is Karma, K-A-R-M-A. -A. And uh, this is the family then. And all the time, there was always this thing about South Dakota, because that's where my grandfather had settled, my great-grandfather had settled, and they always wanted my dad to come back to South Dakota. And he always said, no, he didn't want to go where his family was, because there were a lot of family members up there. <laughs> they were actually uh, members, and, but he, after they'd been without a minister for a year, he agreed to go up there, and he went, and this is where we lived in, in Vibrick, South Dakota. Vibor is the Danish name after a Danish town. And that, they built that house. I remember that house being built was built for us to go up there. Uh, it's interesting that across from the, uh, across the street from my house is what they call the gymnasium. Every one of our churches in those days had a gymnasium. We had a gym, and this is the gym. And, that, and we're, uh, they were to do gymnastics. My father taught gymnastics at one time and to do folk dancing and so forth. There was one in Kimbleton. 
uh, there was one in Diamond Lake, and you'll see one in the other town we lived in. So I just thought you might, I found this picture, I thought you might like to see it. It was taken in 19, but the hall, it's now used for, it's a parish hall. <laughs> Stammer, mother, 